blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. So what he first said number one when trouble strike you don't join your house boy to shout compose your confidence compose yourself compose yourself the outside yeah always do what god tell you to do always do what god tell you to do whatever god tell you to do do it when you do it you will never fail if God asks you to run, run. 
If God asks you to escape, escape. If God asks you to hide, hide. If God asks you to repent, repent. But don't do your will. Do the will of God. Somebody should be able to say hallelujah. The angels in heaven sing. How wonderful are your ways. They tell of your majesty. Everybody sing it. Hallelujah. Turn with me to your Bible. I want to speak on this subject. What to do when the enemy tries to embarrass you. We live in a time 
that there's hunger, nakedness, starvation, and the world is faced with crisis. But Jesus says these words. My peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. Jesus has peace in the troubled world. He said, not as man give, give I you my peace. And thank God, his hand of miracle is here with us today. Second King chapter 6, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall ye be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for these are the Syrians that have come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God told him and won him up and saved himself there, not once, not twice. Could you be kind enough to say, from this day, my safety is not one's affair. God will continue to safeguard me. Be bold to say it. My safety will not be a one-time job for God. But over and over again, God will place his canopy over my head to save me from the reach of the enemies. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want to say this before I go to the message proper. That obedience to the voice of the man of God can help you many, many times. The king of Syria, as you are told here, verse 8, gathered his men and women, mighty men of war, and planned a coup d'etat to destroy the king of Israel. When he held this secret, top secret meeting with his aid, no one knew. But the prophet of God in his home was told by God what was happening in the king's palace. So he sent for the king of Israel and said, my name is Elisha. God told me the king of Syria wants to kill you. Don't pass that road today, tomorrow, the next day. Don't go that road at all. There's a way of death and there's a way of safety. Guess what the king did? The king obeyed. Many kings we have today don't consult God. They consult Oracle. They consult their grandfathers. They consult their ancestors. Even when they go to church, they pray in the church in the name of their ancestors. And the foolish pastors allow them to pray because they think they are kings of this world. But here is a king this morning who the man of God sent for. The Bible says in verse 9, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place. Say with me, God will always send someone when I need him most to guide me to safety. I wish you know what you are talking this morning. Sometimes you are told here, fast today and tomorrow to avoid death. Fast against accident. Pray against accident. Many times those of you who are too busy say, it doesn't matter. Well, I pray it doesn't matter. But one day it may matter. But if you hear what God is saying through any of his servant, man or woman whom you know him, The sign of prosperity is on, not when a man gets money and go and rent a guest house and turn it to brutals. It's not the sign of prosperity. 
And you begin to phone every member of the church. Female, come and see me there. I have 10,000 naira for you. I've just rented this hotel. Then all the girls there who told you we are a Christian will now know you are not a child of God. And then the member you ask to come and see you there, they say, oh, we thought he's a Christian too. That's not how to exercise wealth. If you have wealth, be love furniture. Have a nursing home. Feed the poor. Open school. Renting guest house to destroy children's life is not a way of living. It's a destructive way of living. And all of you with guest houses, may God help you close it. And if you can't close it, may God close you. The one you use for destruction of lives. Here is a man of God. Training for a king. You know what some of the kings of this world today would have said? Who is he? Ordinary evangelist. Ordinary preacher. Stupid. An idiot. Who is he? My grandfather will do it for me. Your grandfather doesn't have your safety. God has your safety in his hands. How many can say amen? amen. He said, don't pass that place. For either the Syrians are come down. They are armed to the teeth. They are waiting to do you evil. Verse 10. And the king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God set him and won him up and saved himself there. Not once, not twice. If only you can hear what God is telling you, your safety is guaranteed. Who can say amen to that? I may enjoy you, but let it hurt you and wound you, provided it gave you saved. If you can't say amen, amen can say you. Verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servant and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel, who is leaking out our secret? Verse 12. One of his servants said, None of us. My Lord, O King. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel, the word thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Stand to your feet, whether you are sick or down or dying. Stand to your feet. A day will come, you will no more have a secret. Everything you think is hidden, God will bring it out. He said, King, you think somebody go from Syria to go and tell Israel? No. There's a king in Israel. There's a man of God there. Everything you do in your room, God show it to him, and he goes to the king of Israel and tell him, the road they plan to do you harm, don't go that way. Always go the way God show you. Follow who know the way. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everything you do in your chamber, God tell it to Elisha. When I said the word I said this morning about guest house, some people were so wounded yesterday. I know you were wounded. I said it so you can be wounded and bruised. Because God should not make you rich to destroy people's life. The money God gave you is not for destruction. But there's a man in Israel. Somebody say hallelujah. There's a man God has put in your life for your safety and protection. There's a person God put in your life for your safety and protection. There's a person God gave you as a gift. So say, this way, this way, this way. You say, why are you pushing me all the way? When the devil leave here and go here, God send you where he is not at. If I were you, I would say amen. Yeah. When we left Ondo a few months ago to Lagos, it was 2 a.m. in the morning, or almost 2 o'clock. 
Ten minutes after we passed Ijebo Day, there was robbery. And they say, you narrowly escaped. That is how the child of God should travel. <laughs> how? You narrowly escaped. That narrow is good enough, for narrow is the way. Somebody say, narrow is the way. You narrowly escape. That's correct. It doesn't matter how narrowly you narrowly escape. May God continue to keep you narrowly going. Verse 13. He said, go and spy. Hear this? Where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he's in Dothan. The man who tells other people what you say of other people, how will he not know of himself? I don't know whether you understand that one. The king said, okay, now that he's telling you wherever, whatever I want to do, help me go and look at where he's hiding. Then come and tell me where he is, then I will go and catch him. Oh, God Almighty. Now, if he heard for the king of Israel, you think the one that concerned him, he will not hear? You, you didn't hear what I'm saying. You are not sure he will hear what concerns himself. Go and spy. They say we don't need to spy. He's in Dothan. Listen to verse 15. And when, when the servant of the... Listen. Therefore sent he either horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. How will you feel one day you wake up, there are 700 armed robbers around your house. Even three armed robbers with catapult and children bisco, still frightening men, talk less of 700 men. 700 men was the one he sent, armed to the teeth, and they surrounded the house of prophet Elijah. They were marching. Very soon he will come out. Very soon he will come out. Very soon he will come out. We are going to kill him according to the instruction of the king. Listen to verse 15. Then the servant of Elijah, the man of God, woke up by 3 a.m. to go and urinate. And behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
that should come out of your mouth. When you, the friend of God, become the enemy of man, what do you say? When you, who God gave light to lead people to safety, is surrounded by weapons of death, May I say this to you, Dr. Digger? What the boy saw was correct. 700 men surrounded one house. And the only language he knew to use was, What shall we do? Listen to what he said, Lawrence. Not where shall we run to, but what shall we do? When men surround you, do something. Is anybody hearing me? God forbid anybody ever attack you. Before they kill you, kill one. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Don't just say, Baba! They say, lie down, you lie down. Roll on the floor, you roll on. Sometimes it's good to roll, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I would rather you kill four before you are killed. I will, not con I, will not, I will not go further with that one. But let me tell you what the man of God, the senior brother of Archbishop B.A. Daosa did. This man is born the same father, same mother with me in those days. I came late, he came on time. He answered him, Hey, shut up! Say to your neighbor, shut up. Don't cry. Don't shout. Don't make noise. God is by your side. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, do you hear what I'm saying? He didn't say we are going to have seven days all night. Because it's too late. Not when the enemy is already in our compound, we start all night. When the enemy comes to your compound, if you have no bottle, you have no cutlass, use your head. When they are negotiating to ask you, where should you say your life or your money? I say your own first. When a thief knows that you are not afraid, he will not be a thief anymore. And God will not let them come to your compound. Yeah. That's my first prayer. You should be able to have cutlass near your bed. You should be able to have gun near your bed. You should be able to have acid near your bed. If you say, if you discuss with this, can I give you a bottle of beer? He said, no, no time for beer. I said, have this. Open the, open the acid. What shall we do? Church is a place of training you how to defend yourself. What shall we do? And he said, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Somebody shout. Somebody shout! They that be with us! They that be with us! I'm more than they that be with them. Say, God with me is more than the devil with them. Listen to what he first said. Number one, when trouble strike, don't join your house boy to shout. Compose your confidence. Compose yourself. Compose yourself. They are outside. Yeah. Always do what God tells you to do. Always do what God tells you to do. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. When you do it, you will never fail. If God asks you to run, run. If God asks you to escape, escape. If God asks you to hide, hide. If God asks you to revenge, revenge. But don't do your will. Do the will of God. Somebody should be able to say hallelujah. I remind you again, pastor. The boy didn't say what, where are we going to run to. He said what are we going to do. And the man of God said this is what we are going to do. Number one, we should know. The army from heaven is more than the army from Dundon Barak. Somebody say amen. amen. 
The soldiers that defend us, they are not from Aso Rock. Oh, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. There are more than the 661,000 soldiers that federal government have. And they don't carry weapons of man. They are carrying a weapon not made by man. And our weapons of warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty, they are strong. Through the pulling down of the strongholds of the enemy. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh yes. I say oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And Elijah prayed. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Oh, jump up and say, there are angels around me. The mountains are full of angels around me. I said, begin to jump and say, there are angels. There are angels near my house. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh God Almighty. Whew. Professor Hoyer, it was a city. It was the city that the chariots and horses of the Syrian troops surrounded. For it's on top of the mountain. And you know the man who shoots from above can kill quicker than the man behind. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, the He said, look at the mountain. Listen to this. The prophet have not even prayed for the people. He says, God, oh, I pray all of you who are ordained ministers. First of all, God give you grace to be coming to service. Amen. Not once a week the way you do now. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh yes, those of you come once a month, once a week, when Papa is at home. For those of you who come only the day you are asked to preach, I pray that God will forgive you and you'll be a man of God indeed. Amen. This servant was the one that needed prayer first. Listen to the time he spent. He said, excuse me. Peace. Touch your neighbor, say peace. Don't worry. Say whatever I say, peace. peace. Don't, worry. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Don't Look, up. Look up. Say it loud. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. Look up. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now you hear this Odigian uh, 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 When the man say look up It's to distract him from looking Where the enemies are Sometimes your enemy Becomes so big because you are at the same level A day will come you say greater is he that is in me Somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. So Elisha said it's not the people I need to pray for first, but you who is walking with me and your eyes are still closed. Lord, open his eyes. Amen. Lord, open his eyes. Amen. That he may see. And guess what the Bible says? And the Lord God opened his eyes. Just clean your face. Say, God, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Try it. Say, God, open my eyes. Open my now say, God, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Look at the next verse. The Lord God opened his eyes. The Lord God opened his eyes and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire ran about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Lord, smith these people, smith them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Are you hearing me? He said, the Lord, you have opened my servant's eye, but transfer the blindness to the eyes of the 700 men. Oh, somebody should have said hallelujah. Those of you who are not too old, say, jump up and say, so shall it be. My enemy will be blind in my compound. They may come, but they will not see me. And they will not even come to my house. 
in the name of Jesus. Now this is my word to you this morning. What Allah cannot do, prayers can do it. Raise your right hand up and pray. Pray for your protection. I want to put the canopy of God over your head. I seal your life. I cover you with the canopy of the Holy Ghost. I put prayer cover over you. In the name of Jesus. Severe from the arrows of the wicked. Safeguard from the wicked ones. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I take them from the evil hand. I place them in your hand. Open their eyes to see your protection. To see your provision. That you are the God of miracle. You change not. Therefore, sons of men are not consumed. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say loud, Amen. Amen. Now stand to your feet for one minute, everybody. Put your two hands above your head. Say with me, Father, put your prayer cover and the spirit of safety over me, my family, my property. We show ourselves in your hand, in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. amen. I send the power of God upon you. May that umbrella never break. And may that canopy never get broken. May the hand of God be upon your lives. Save you from the arrows of the wicked. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. I'm a winner in the, in the Lord Jesus. Choir, let me hear that chorus. Take your feet, take your hand, let's sing that chorus. I'm a winner in the Lord Jesus. All right. I am a winner, I am a winner. I am a winner, I am a winner. I bring your attention to the situation we are in in Nigeria. I will be calling you for special prayers. We need to pray for this nation. Elections are at hand. The people that are in authority are all campaigning. And I'm going to ask you to back us up in prayer as we bring Nigeria as a nation under God in prayer. That you take it as a serious job to do by praying to God daily in any church you belong to especially if you are in a believing Bible church, to agree with us that God will bring peace and tranquility during this election. May God cause this nation to be wholesome in body, soul, and spirit. That's my prayer, and I believe you are praying in Jesus' name. Amen. May God make you a winner and not a loser. And may God set the power of the Holy Ghost around your property and your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If dog is dead, who made the broken part? If dog is dead, who keeps night and day apart?
I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
Once every year, members of Church of God Mission International from all over the world convened at Faith Arena to celebrate victory over the works of the enemy. Blessings, healing, deliverance, and many other goodies. Theme, seated in heavenly places to rule. Church speaker, Apostle Tono Ejusian Nursing, anointed of God from Trinidad and Tobago. All that speakers are Bishop Dr. Dot C. Doyle, founder of Deliverance Life Tabernacle, Dokadu, Georgia. Bishop David Hawkins. USA. Chief host, the presiding Bishop of Church of God Mission International, Right Reverend Dr. Margaret Benson Idahosa, joined the Church of God from the 6th to the 10th November 2002 for this great convention. Morning section 9 a.m., evening section 5 p.m. daily. Church of God Mission International Incorporated, Faith Arena, number one Faith Way, GRA, Benin City. Don't miss out. Join us. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idaosa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa. 
of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed a law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. He said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. 
Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if the was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. She took Benin, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believe in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today, it also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced 
that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. 
and he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said it's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside the war room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father comes, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing dead. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another no bed to me. After a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby. I'm a wood. I'm this. But for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand it, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> To him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power 
So the father just came and we started celebrating. But he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this and you know when i finished prayers there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh we, we used to call him brother benson he came and said where is the child you said the child is there and i called him to the room i said you know what i did last night i didn't know uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no me ga jere, he no me ga ta gi Jesu me gu wese, he no me ga ta gu wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, 18 months old, 
he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is 
in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work, and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dowser. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself 
he was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Have Bishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blind, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world and I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord I am honored to be a part of his anointing a part of his of his ministry I want to ask you please make sure you share these videos this video this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful powerful humble great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him I, and I'll say it again I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house the Lord bless you.